Hello all. Welcome to today's class. My name is Sushma D and I am working as Assistant Professor of English at GFGC Shira. As you all familiar with the syllabus pattern of General English, even in fourth semester, section A is poetry. Under this section, you are supposed to study five poems. I'll be discussing with you section A, that is poetry of paper 4, general English 4th semester BA, BSc syllabus. Today, we shall be discussing a wonderful piece by William Shakespeare entitled All the World is a State. Before we start analyzing the poem, let us know about the poet and the poem. So, in today's session, I'll be giving you an introduction connected to the poet and the poem. You're all familiar with William Shakespeare, I suppose. Yeah? He is William Shakespeare. His period is 1564 to 16. 16. Note on the poet. So William Shakespeare is regarded as the greatest writer in the world of English language. He is a renowned English poet, a dramatist and an actor. He is also considered as the national poet in England. His plays still remain highly popular today and is still being performed, studied and reinterpreted. Modern critics agree that he is the world's greatest dramatist. His knowledge on men and women is unequaled. Not only does he give us magnificent poetry, but also a profound insight into human nature. Thus, he is considered by many to be the greatest dramatist of all the time. His exact birth date is unknown. He was baptized in 1564 and thus it is believed that he was born on April 23rd, 1564 at Stratford-upon-Avon as the eldest son of John Shakespeare, who is a leather trader. He did not go to university to pursue education. He probably attended uh, the grammar school in Stratford, where uh, he would have studied Latin and read classical literature. Thus, he began writing at an early age, and established a reputation for himself by acting and writing plays. Shakespeare's reputation was established in London by 1592. It was during this time that Shakespeare wrote his earliest plays. His early works include the two long poems, Venus and Adonis, published in the year 1593 and The Rape of Lucrece, published in the year 1594. He also became a founding member of the Lord Chamberlain's Men, a company of actors. He remained with the company for the rest of his career during this time, Shakespeare wrote many of his most famous tragedies. His works consist of about 38 plays, 154 sonnets, some long narrative poems and other verses. He died in Stratford-upon-Avon on 23rd April 1616 at the age of 50. 
He is buried in the sanctuary of the parish church, Holy Trinity. This is a very short biographical note on the poet William Shakespeare. Let us move further about the poem. So, all the world is a stage is a dramatic monologue. So, the form of the poem is a dramatic monologue. What is dramatic monologue? So, dramatic monologue is uh, nothing but self-conversation. We can also define dramatic monologue as a poem written in the form of a speech of an individual character. So, it is a poem uh, by William Shakespeare. In fact, uh, it was not a poem earlier but a monologue from the maestros as you like it. Thus, uh, we could say that all the world is a stage is an extract from Act 2, Scene 7 of Shakespeare's play as you like it. The speech is spoken by the character Jax. So, in this particular poem, so Shakespeare discusses the futility of humanity's place in this world. He explores the themes of time, aging, memory and the purpose of life. Through the poem's central conceit that everyone is simply a player in a larger game that they have no control over, he brings the themes together. Shakespeare compares life to a stage and takes the reader through the stages of life starting with infancy and childhood and ending up with an old man who is being a lover, a soldier and a judge. The man dies after reverting back to a stage that is close to childhood and infancy. Thus, in order to so bring this wonderful theme of the poem, the poet has employed the following literary devices. They are simile, metaphor, repetition. As you all know, simile and metaphor are used for comparison. So, simile is referred as a direct comparison. Metaphor is referred as indirect comparison. Let us deal with the simile first. So, simile is a figure of speech involving the comparison of two different things directly by using the comparison words such as like, as or so. Some of the similes used in the poem are creeping like a snail, bearded like the part, etc. Moving to metaphor. Metaphor is also a figure of speech involving the comparison between two different things indirectly. So, we could say that metaphor is an implied comparison. Actually, the entire poem itself is more like symbolism. All the men and women are portrayed as players whereas life is portrayed as stage in this particular poem. And thus uh, we could say that uh, stage is the metaphor for life and uh, 
players or actors is the metaphor for all the human beings. Moving to next figure of speech, repetition. Repetition is uh, another figure of speech used in the poem to emphasize the poet's thoughts. Repetition is nothing but repeating the words or phrases more than twice in a poem to provide a special effect or meaning to the poem. In this particular poem, words like sans, eight, are repeated more than twice in this poem. So this is about literary devices and about the poem. So with this uh, short brief introduction connected to the poem, I hope that we could fairly analyze the poem, all the world is a stage. So without wasting much of our time, let us start analyzing the poem. Here we go. All the world is a stage, William Shakespeare. All the world is a stage and all the men and women merely players. In the first line of the poem, the speaker, Jax, begins with the famed lines that later came to denote this entire speech. This means all the world is a stage is the first line of the poem and symbolically this line has been used to represent the entire idea of this monologue. He declares that all the world is a stage and that the people living in it are merely players. This sets up what is one of the most skilled conceits in all of English literature. Every person, no matter who they are, where they were born or what they want to do with their lives wakes up every day with a role. They enter, they exit just like performers. Thus the poet says, they have their exits and their entrances. It is important to note at this point that these lines would be read on stage in front of an audience. The actor is declaring to the audience that you are just as much of an actor as he is. He means to state that just like an actor who is an acting on the stage, all the men and women who are leading their life in, the, in this particular world are mere actors just like him and they have their entrances and exits to perform in the world's stage. Moving further, and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. Before the listener starts to get concerned about the role they have to play, Jax adds that a man or a woman plays many different parts in their lives as an actor does. Whoever the actor may be on the stage is not only Jax. 
He is also many other characters throughout his career. It is in the fifth line of the monologue that Shakespeare brings in slightly more complex concept that of the seven ages of humankind. His acts being seven ages. Every man during his lifetime plays many parts. According to the poet, these parts are called seven ages and these seven ages are compared to the acts of the play in a drama. Thus, the world is a stage wherein men and women are mere actors. Birth and death is referred to as exits and entrances onto the stage. Man plays many roles in seven acts. Now, he begins to describe each age. The first age is referred as infancy. At first, the infant mewling and puking in nurse's arms. His first act is that of an infant making soft tender noises and vomiting as the child is nursed by the mother. It is the first enaction of each and every human being during the infancy stage. Then the whining schoolboy with his satchel and shining morning face creeping like snail unwillingly to school. The second act is that of a school going boy. So he begins his acting by complaining and showing his reluctance to go to school. With a shining morning face, he walks to school in a snail's pace, which means very slowly he moves to school by showing a sort of reluctancy to move to school with his school bag slung over his back. And this is the second stage of human beings that is childhood stage. The first stage is infancy and the second is the childhood stage. And then the lover sighing like furnace with a awful ballad made to his mistress eyebrow. The third age of human being is youth. So we could say that the third act represents youth wherein each and every man undergoes both physical and emotional changes. He becomes so passionate about love matters and craves for lady love. By remembering his lady love, he sighs like a furnace. So his sighing like a furnace exhibits the extremity of emotions connected towards that love. So by sighing like a furnace and by remembering his beloved's beauty, his beloved's eyebrow, he would even compose ballads or songs. And this is the third stage of human being, that is 
you. So let me end this session here and continue analyzing the next part of the poem in my next class. I hope you have understood the essence of this masterpiece by Shakespeare entitled All the World is a State. Thank you all.